the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked On Buckeyes for the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by the Locked On Big Ten Podcast because there's simply no better place to get all the news on the Big Ten Conference than with the Locked On Big Ten Podcast and its new host, Mr. Nate Dickinson, follow the Locked On Big Ten Podcast on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your fine podcast. It is Thursday, August the 12th in the year 2021. And no matter if you're listening to the audio version of the podcast or if you're watching us on YouTube or WKYC.com, all three ways are free. And I want to thank you for making Locked On Buckeyes a part of your day. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at jstevens07. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter as well, at Locked on Buckeye. Lineup for today, we're going to highlight and discuss a mind shift in a young man who may be a big piece of the offensive line this year. Segment three, Jake Arthur, who covers the Indianapolis Colts for Sports Illustrated, will be with us to continue our Buckeye road trip around the NFL. But we open today's show with some unfortunate news about a young man who just joined the team in June. Man, this young man tore his ACL. It's very, very, very unfortunate. When you join a group or you join a team or you get a new job or you do something new, you start a new journey and all of a sudden there is a major, and I mean a major setback, either a physical setback where you cannot do the things that you used to do. Maybe you have mental block, a mental issue that is not allowing you to be as successful as you want to. Maybe it's some financial hardship and all of a sudden you're you're scrambling and trying to do things to put the pieces together that you never thought you had to do before. Jalen Johnson, true freshman, six foot one, 223 pound freshman, joined the team in June out of Cincinnati, Ohio, LaSalle High School, a three star recruit, according to 24 seven sports, number 16th ranked player in the state of Ohio, according to 24 seven sports, has torn his ACL in a season is over. Yes, I have. Yes, you tear your ACL in August. The season's going to be over in January. The recovery for that will not be up in time. Plus, this young man has not lost his black stripe. Not saying it's a, he won't lose it. Don't get me wrong. But it's just like Jacob Cowan last year. Jacob Cowan had an injury last season. Ultimately, did not lose his black stripe until this past spring because he could not lose it during his first season, first year at the Ohio State University. Same thing for Mr. Jalen Johnson as well. He is projected to be a bullet. The hybrid linebacker safety combo at 6'1", 223. He has the height. He has the body size, the girth, the mass to play that role very, very well. I mean, 220, 230. If he can play inside the box and in the secondary, baby, that's perfect for what we're looking for right now with this position. But tearing your ACL, that's going to be not just a physical block, a physical little setback for you but possibly a mental block, a mental setback for Mr. Johnson as well. Think about it. Think about your life. If you were an athlete, if you were something, if you you got a new journey, say you got a new job, and all of a sudden, literally something happens to where you're, you have a six-month or nine-month setback. Well, he's not getting cut from the team. He's still going to be with the team and rehabbing and getting better, but That block, knowing that there are guys in front of you that are getting more reps, they're even getting more mental reps. There are recruits that are going to come in that that aren't going to have that recovery problem or be going through the recovery process like you are. You got guys with you. You got guys behind you that are all going to be striving to get better every single day. Not the ideal way to start your career at The Ohio State University. Not the ideal way to start your career athletically 
in any sport. This reminds me of something where I was at church camp, my very first time at this particular church camp. It was the summer of two th- July, specifically, uh, in the year of 2004. My buddy Cameron Matthews invited myself and Devin Williams to a church camp that he used to go to. I had never been there before. It's in southern Indiana. It was hot. It was H-O-T. It was hot. I mean, 95 degrees plus. I mean, we're just, we're there to have some fun. That's it. We're there to have some fun. And so Devin, Cameron, and I, we are there going and going to this camp. And you know me, I'm a youngster, what, 13, 14 years old at the time. What do I want to do? I want to play. Maybe it was maybe maybe in 2002. It was 2002, 2004. I believe it was 2004. What does Jay want to do at this time? Jay is trying to play some basketball. Jay is trying to play. Jay is trying to play some basketball. Jay is trying to play some football. Jay is trying to do something athletic. Not the most athletic build at that time, but you got me, two of my buddies. They play basketball. I play basketball with them. Let's go ahead and make this thing happen. And all of a sudden, there during the camp, it was me, Cameron, Devin, and a couple guys from another church there playing basketball. We were, I forget how, how many was it? Three on three? I don't know exactly how many guys were there. Let's just say we we're playing three on three. And all of a sudden, man, I'm going and bam, messed up my knee. I didn't get crossed. Don't, don't, don't get that. Don't, don't, don't get that. We're playing basketball and Jay gets crossed. No, 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 no. That didn't happen this time. I haven't crossed before. I'll t- I may tell that story down the road, but this was not that time. I didn't get crossed, but I messed up my knee. What happened? I tried to keep going. I tried to keep going, and I messed up my knee another time that week playing basketball. So I messed up my knee the first day, messed up my knee the second day. The last night they were at camp, the guy who was speaking called me up to the front. I forget exactly why. All of a sudden, I walk and my knee, that was already hurt, gave out on me, and I had another injury there. If I was just smart, I was advised to just sit out, relax, watch, enjoy the time, enjoy being around these people. It was 2002, not 2004. My years were all messed up. But enjoy this time period with the people around you. Okay, cool. I'll enjoy it. But I want to partake in what they're partaking in because I know I will have fun just like them. Jalen Johnson, don't take Jay's advice. Don't do what Jay did as a youngster in the eighth grade, 2002. Do what is needed to take a setback, relax, recover properly, so that when you come, recover, when you're fully recovered, you can be the best athlete you can be, not be like Jay. And Jay, still right now, there are times that still to this day, I still feel the effects. There are times that my knee that I hurt back then still gives me problems. Jalen Johnson, full recovery. Don't be like Jay and keep going at it when you're not supposed to. Take the advice of the doctors and the professionals around you and heal quickly, as quickly as you can, heal fully, and then get back at it, lose that black stripe, and then be the best Buckeye you can be. We're going to step back very quickly when we come back. We're going to talk about the mindset shift, the mind change in a certain Buckeye that will maybe use in a big way this year at the Ohio State University. But first, check this out. Hey, guys. So there are a few things in life that aren't just that just aren't fun to talk about. One of them is excessive sweating. You know, when you are sweating through your shirts for no reason, it's embarrassing, right? Some of you may know that I personally have dealt with this. When I speak in public, I can't help but sweat through my shirt. Now listen, I know this isn't life and death, and there are much worse problems in the world, but let's be honest. In the moment, it feels like a big deal. Nobody likes to pit out during an important speech, interview, or first date, God forbid. I'd much rather not worry about it. And that's why I use sweat block antiperspirant wipes. Sweat block is stronger and more effective than most clinical antiperspirants. You can simply apply it at night, before bedtime, go to bed. The next morning you wake up, wash, and go about your day without worrying about sweat, guaranteed. I know this will sound too good to be true, but I literally only have to use sweat block once or twice a week, and it keeps me dry the whole time. No more pitting out. No more picking my shirts based on which one will hide sweat better. If you are someone you love is dealing with this, you have to check out sweat block. Get it today for 20% off at sweatblock.com with promo code locked on L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, and it's all one word, or at Amazon. 
and CVS. If this is your first time checking out Locked on Buckeyes, I want to say welcome. Or if it's your first time in a long time checking out the podcast, Jay wants to say welcome back. Locked on Buckeyes drops a fresh new episode for you every Monday through Friday. Got a big show lined up tomorrow all about Quinn Ewers, all about the decision that he made and at different aspects of that. Hey, that's tomorrow. Today, subscribe, leave a five-star review, and make sure you tell a friend, a family member, and maybe even that foe, that guy that you don't like, but you know he loves the Ohio State Buckeyes, so that he can stay up to date. So he can stay up to date with the Ohio State Buckeyes, just like you. Subscribe, audio, YouTube, so you don't miss a beat. Anytime a young man comes to Ohio State, anytime a young man goes to play football in college. There is a mindset that he has going in. It could be positive. It could be negative. It could be somewhere in the middle, but he has a mindset coming in. And there are times, oftentimes, there is a shifting. There is a changing of the mindset with the young man. Just a day ago, we talked about the possibility of a Nicholas Petit Freyer, left tackle, Fred Mumford, left guard, Harry Miller, center, Paris Johnson, Jr., right guard, and then Dewan Jones right tackle combination on the offensive line. That's four tackles in the offensive depth chart from last season. Two that are now playing guard. One's moving over from left tackle to left guard. One's moving to the opposite side of the line. One guy's moving over one. Dewan Jones just a tackle. Just depends on what side of the line you want to put him on. And Dewan Jones is the individual that myself and other people that cover Ohio State did not think would be a part of the starting lineup this year. Not set in stone, but I wouldn't be surprised if it happened. You want to put the best five guys on the field, on the offensive line, in any given season, and this might be the best five that Ohio State has and as a collective unit this year. Well, Dewan Jones coming out of high school, he was looked at as a basketball player. You look at him six foot eight, 360 to 370 pounds. I always say 360. His words say 360 to 370. So I'll use his weight gauge that he that he has instead of my own. That's a big boy. That's a massive boy. In the state of Indiana, when he played high school athletics, he was always looked at as a basketball player. And I'm not just saying that as saying like, oh, dear, try to feed into this narrative. No, I, I've seen the man play. I saw him play basketball more than I saw him play football. Honestly, I knew he played football, but I didn't. I didn't when I heard he, was going, he had an offer from Ohio State, I said, yeah, he's big, but he's a basketball player. The local writer inside Indianapolis for the Indianapolis Star knew he was a basketball player. I mean, his, his main sport was basketball. Coming out of coming out of high school, he had offers from he had top power five schools, Ohio State, USC, just to name a couple. He all of his basketball offers were non power five offers. They were not your big time schools, more of a more of your mid major style college basketball. Why? He's six eight three sixty. I mean, it's amazing when I was watching him play the basketball that he was able to do what he did against no matter who the opposition was. Uh, good feet, good footwork, good vision. He could pass a little bit. He was smart with the basketball. He was hard to stop. You bring a double team in, he, he could either get through it or he could pass the ball out and get the open shot for his man. He's a state champion in the high school basketball. I forget if he won the high school football state championship, but I know for sure he has at least, I think he has two. I know he had at least one, but he might have two state championships at the high school basketball level. Dewan Jones is an amazing athlete. But coming into Ohio State, Dewan Jones' mindset was, yeah, I, I like football, but I don't love football. Yeah, I like what I'm doing, but I don't love the football. And somewhere along the way, there was a shifting in the mindset. There was an alteration of his approach to the football. Because you can do something and not love it and make it come across like you are all in. But ultimately, those around you, your peers, maybe your mama, maybe your dad, maybe your high school coach, they may look at you and say, hey, young man, I know what you say. I know what you're looking at. I know exactly what it is that you think is going on. But ultimately, nah, nah. You can't fool me. You can fool all these other people that don't know you, but you can't fool 
me. And Dewan Jones has even said that he didn't love the football at Ohio State. The love for the football grew and was cultivated while at the Ohio State University. And you have seen these pictures all around the social media this all season. You have seen him seen a whole lot more excited, especially when the hitting going is going on. You're 6'8", 360. You're going to be a guy that moves people. And hey, that love that he has now for the football could find him, could find himself in the starting lineup at the Ohio State University. Here is a little, here is a little uh, quote from Coach Stud, the offensive line coordinator. Uh, forgive me for not knowing, for not pronouncing his name. St I Stud Raya. I always butcher his name every time I look at it. But here's a little quote from Coach Stud on Tuesday when speaking to the media about Dewan Jones. Quote, his development has been un unbelievable. The kid is like any anything else with linemen and its maturity. You go through recruiting and you recruit a guy like that that has the unusual enthusiasm to get to where he wants to be. Dewan has always had that. Plus, his athleticism is incredible. His attention to detail and learning football has always been the issue. He was a basketball guy. So it's taken some time to develop that. Now his attention span is different. His attention to detail is different. His work ethic and his want to be great at football is totally different, end quote. Is it th doesn't that sound like a guy, a gentleman, that you can see a complete shifting in the mindset you can see a complete shifting in his approach you can see a complete alteration in his in the way that he works at his craft if you don't love something if i didn't love what i do hosting this podcast if i didn't love football or basketball or if i didn't love the things that i do on a regular basis it would show the people around me it would show every single day and they would look at jsaj what is wrong with you you are doing all of these things in action, but what's inside is not really screaming that the action is one of love, one out of obligation. Doing something out of obligation and doing something out of love are two different things. Now, you can do things out of obligation and do things out of love, and they'll be A-OK. -okay. They'll be just, just fine. But Dewan Jones going from, I want to do this. I, I, I want to. I want to. I want to play at Ohio State. I want to play football, but now I love to play the football, and I love paying attention to, to the details, and I love X, Y, and Z about what is going on at the Ohio State University. It's showing now, and Dewan Jones that shifting there. Mumford telling Dewan, "Hey, if you do what you need to do, I'll move over, and we could possibly have you start." play a whole lot more this year at Ohio State because I believe you could be that good. That conversation may have been what has propelled Dewan Jones to be the best Buckeye he can be this year. Step away one more time. When we come back, we'll welcome in Jake Arthur, who covers the Indianapolis Colts for Sports Illustrated, as he will continue, we will continue, our Buckeye road trip around the NFL, hitting first today, Mr. Ty Quan Lewis. But first, check this out. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Baseball season is in full swing, and you can track all the action at Bet Online. Get all the latest news, odds, and info for all your sporting needs, including MLB, NBA, NHL, and all your UFC slash MMA action. Before the next pitch, head over to betonline.ag on your laptop or mobile device and check out all the great sporting news, sign up bonuses, and even contest information. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore as this is your chance to get into the game as teams prep for their runs to the playoffs. Head to betonline.ag on your laptop or mobile device to sign up today. And when you do, make sure you use that friendly promo code locked on. L O C K E D O N, and it's all one word. And receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, your online sports book experts. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning? Is your Odyssey an LX or and EX and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30%, 50%, 
even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Rock Auto. Dot com. And joining us now here on Locked on Buckeyes, it is Jake Arthur. He covers the Indianapolis Colts for Sports Illustrated. Jake, how you doing? Yeah, I'm awesome, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. No problem at all. Jake, we're continuing what I have been calling the Buckeye road trip around the NFL, highlighting former Buckeyes in the NFL, getting season expe expectations for them in the upcoming NFL season. First guy on the list, Tyquan Lewis, a guy mm -hmm. that the Colts loved. I was high on coming out of Ohio State. There have been some things that kind of derailed him to this point in his career, but it looks like things are looking promising but to date, how have you assessed um, uh, Tyquan Lewis um, with this short tenure with the Colts so far? Yeah, he's kind of had a roller coaster tenure, but it's it's definitely on the the upswing now. His rookie year, he looked good. I think he had about four sacks. Uh, he really looked like a guy you were going to be able to count on in the future. His second year, uh, I think he had like a foot or ankle injury, and just was never the same throughout practice or the whole season. So. Year two was kind of dead for him. Last year came back and built off of that rookie year like the second year never happened. Uh, and he kind of has parlayed that into, um, you know, if the season started today, he'd be their starting left defensive end. And a lot of people are really excited about him. Uh, he's he's really ideal for that role. Uh, he can set the edge and, and plays the run well, but also he can get after the quarterback. Uh, he's versatile. They like to kick him inside, too. Uh, there, there's a lot of different things they're going to be able to do with him. He was one of their first guys that, you know, this front office drafted where they, they like to get those big college defensive ends and play them at three tech. But it just so happens he's been much better as a defensive end in the NFL. So they're, they're just kind of looks like they're just going to keep him there. Occasionally move him inside on passing downs when you need kind of a speed package. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of reason to be excited about Taekwon. Where do you think he fits best as far as the speed package or just in general, inside or outside? Uh, so just like in the base defense, normal downs and everything, left end is perfect for him because yeah. uh, it looks like they're going to have Quiddy Pay on the right side. And then I believe he, I believe he lines up at nose tackle occasionally, but in the speed package, he's three tech. Um, you know, putting putting him next to DeForest Buckner, that's that's a pretty nice combo. <laughs> it is. How important is the versatility along the defensive, defensive line for the Indianapolis Colts? Uh, they put a big premium on it. Uh, most of the guys that they have out there can play multiple positions. Um, the defensive ends, e even the ones who are just kind of the pass rushing types can play left or right side. They've got a lot of guys who can play end and tackle. Uh they get they just get these guys with the tweener size where a lot of teams are like I don't know what to do with that but the Colts are like we'll do everything with that uh, so it's it's really a premium you rarely see them grab someone who's just gonna have one singular role unless it's like a their their nose tackle guys uh, but generally the other three uh, defensive line positions have some sort of versatility to them. When it comes to training camp this year, I know you've been out there, I've been seeing, following your tweets and everything on, on the Twitter and reading a lot of your articles as well throughout the training camp period. What have you liked and possibly disliked that you've seen from Taekwon Lewis? Uh, he's One thing that he's really doing is, uh, so the, the Colts have like four defensive ends right now that are really popping. He's one of them. Uh, it's him, Quiddy Pay, um, Ben Banigou, and Kamoka Ture. The other guys are playing on the right side, and the Colts have been severely banged up on the offensive line to counter those guys. So they're, those guys are winning against, like, twos and threes. Tyquan Lewis is beating Braden Smith every day uh, in oh, one-on-ones wow. one -on -ones and 11-on-11s. And Braden Smith, he probably would have been a pro bowler last year if it was the normal format where, like, a couple guys drop out. Braden Smith probably would have had his first pro bowl last year. Very 
very well may have it this next year. Um, so he's beating a legitimate offensive tackle. And I like that he's developed some moves too. He's kind of he's kind of got the the two hand club swim thing right now. Uh, you see the Bosa brothers do it a lot, but he I don't want to say he's mastered it, but it's really really effective. So he's at least got one really good um, one good pass rush move down. In regards to the season, with him being injured, having the injuries that he has had, are you expecting? I want to say I didn't want to say breakout year because I think that's overused and overused word. But are you looking for him to play ten plus games and be a starter in all of those games that he plays? I know seventeen games will get ding, dinged up. All the like it, ding, getting dinged up is going to happen, uh, especially when you haven't played a full season yet. I it, it's nice to expect him to play a full season, but you just never know with the way injuries are in the National Football League. But would you say that him playing ten plus games is a realistic? goal for him this year yeah absolutely he hasn't been so banged up that you can't expect him to be right. around uh like paris campbell well, that we'll talk about you know his his expectation is that he'll be hurt unfortunately but taekwon's not been that way he's really just had that rough second year uh, i don't see any reason why he won't be their their starting left end every week um i think he'll be pretty productive in that role as well any last comments you have for um about Taekwon Lewis, uh, things you've seen this year, expectations you personally have for him going into the season? Yeah, just excited that he's going to get this opportunity to start at left end. Um, a, a lot of us have been kind of clamoring for some of their younger defensive ends to get a little more playing time. And not only have have the Colts trusted him to go into that spot, but he's been earning it in practice. Um, I, would, I would say expectations-wise, like I said, I think he'll be the starter all year at left end, I'm kind of picturing about seven, seven and a half sacks for him. If he exceeds it, great, because in practice, it looks like he could do it. Uh, but I, I think a decent baseline uh, for a guy of his caliber at the starting left end would be about that seven, seven and a half range uh, and, and provide some good run support as well. Jake, this has been fun helping us continue our Buckeye road trip around the NFL. If you could let everyone know where they can connect with you on Twitter and also where they can read your articles as well. Yep. Uh, looks like you were kind enough to put my uh, Twitter Twitter handle there, at JakeArthurNFL. Uh, you can find me there on Twitter and Facebook as well. Uh, the website I write for on Sports Illustrated is their Colts website. That's HorseshoeHuddle.com. Uh, you can also just go to SI.com and find your way to, to the Colts coverage. Uh, but yeah, that's that's where I'm pouring. I'm pouring a lot of content in there since camp has started, and it's it's not going to slow down once the season's here. So I, I would appreciate any anyone looking that up. It's been fun, Jake. I really appreciate you coming on. Tyquan Lewis. Now we're talking about Paris Campbell here later on. Thank you for coming on, Jake. Here on Locked On Buckeyes. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you.